Hey guys, this is our next topic. It is photosynthesis, topic 2.9 and 8.3. Um, photosynthesis is the process by which light energy is converted into chemical energy using visible light from the sun, carbon dioxide, and water. This produces chemical energy in the form of glucose as well as oxygen as a waste product. Um, so we're going to be learning today about the organelles that accomplish this as well as how light makes this happen. Before we dive in, I'd like you to read Understandings 2.9.2 .2 to 2.9.3 and 8.3.14. Once you've read through these and you have an idea of what we're going to cover today, I want you to also brainstorm what are the different types of light or electromagnetic radiation and how do they impact living organisms. Okay, so visible light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It is produced by the movement of charged particles, um, specifically charged electrons moving from um, energy level to energy level. Um, there are a lot of different types of electromagnetic radiation, some having more energy, some having less. Gamma rays, for example, um, are used for radiation treatments and are harmful to living organisms while AM radio waves are very, very low energy, very long in wavelength, and are not harmful, as far as we know. So, those are some of the different types of electromagnetic radiation. We are specifically concerned with visible light. Visible light is a small section of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum, but it is comprised of all of the different colors of light possible. So the different colors are viewed that way because they have different wavelengths and different amounts of energy. Purple or blue light have the shortest wavelength and therefore the most energy, while reds have a longer wavelength and less energy overall. So we're going to see why this matters um, in just a moment, but this is the visible light spectrum that we are going to be working with when it comes to photosynthesis. The main photosynthetic, photosynthetic organelle is the chloroplast, and the chloroplast contains a large amount of the photosynthetic pigment, which is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the area where light energy is actually trapped and turned into chemical energy. Um, the head of the molecule is polar and composed of a ring structure. At the center of this ring structure, we have an atom of magnesium, and the magnesium is the light-trapping molecule, so that's where light is trapped, um, in the center of that green area. And then the tail of the molecule is actually um, nonpolar, and is going to embed itself into the membrane of the chloroplast. So here at the top, we've got the light-collecting area, and then here we've got kind of the anchor point for this chlorophyll. Uh, there are other pigments as well besides chlorophyll. There's reds, yellows, browns, etc. Um, but these are kind of overshadowed by the chlorophyll during the main growing time of the season, which is why most leaves appear green. Okay, so visible light is kind of an interest because the light that is absorbed are all of the colors that we cannot see, while the light that's reflected are all the colors that we can see. So for example, if you're wearing a red shirt, then every color besides red is being absorbed by your shirt, while um, red itself, that color, is being reflected back into your eyes. So that's what you see. So chlorophyll works in a very similar way. Chlorophyll is green. It's a green pigment. Therefore, it appears green to us because it is reflecting green light. So therefore, we get an absorption spectrum here where we can see the colors that are best absorbed by chlorophyll. And it makes sense that we've got this dip, which my color is disappearing there, around the green area because the chlorophyll is green. Therefore, it does not absorb that color well, if at all. So we're going to get the most light energy from our blues and purples and from our reds. 
So the absorption spectrum are the colors of light that chlorophyll actually absorbs. This absorption leads to the action spectrum, and the action spectrum are the wavelengths of light that actually cause photosynthesis to occur. So as you can see, this curve is very, very uh, similar to the absorption spectrum, with the most photosynthesis happening with the blues and purples, um, a lot happening with reds and oranges as well, with a dip in that green and yellow region, because chlorophyll is not effectively absorbing that light, therefore it's not causing an action. All right, so here's just another way of looking at it. First graph that we have here is an absorption spectrum, but this time it's for several different pigments that we might find in plants. We've got chlorophyll B, which um, absorbs, it looks like the highest energy amounts right around that blue range. We see carotene and we see chlorophyll A. So these are slightly different pigments, but they all contribute to photosynthesis. So these pigments working together accomplish, help to accomplish photosynthesis. And then the next graph we have here is a comparison of the absorption spectrum, so that's going to be your um, thicker line, with the action spectrum. Now you can see that they are very close. Uh, they mirror each other pretty well. The only kind of, I guess, disparities that we see here and here um, are due to the availability of different pigments to absorb these different wavelengths of light. So when we've got absorption, we've got action. However, depending on which pigment is absorbing, uh, there could be slightly less action if that is not one of the main photosynthetic pigments. Okay, so moving right along, um, in class you guys we're asked to annotate and label a diagram of a chloroplast. Um, chloroplasts are the organelle in which photosynthesis occurs. Um, they're located in a lot of specialized cells in the plant, especially those near the surface of the plant that will have um, access to sunlight. Um, let's see, they are going to contain all of the structures uh, in which photosynthesis will occur, allowing us to turn water, carbon dioxide, and light energy into glucose. So things you should be sure to label on your drawing is the double membrane around the outside of the chloroplast, the thylakoids, uh, the thylakoids are um, basically an inner membranous sac um, and they are organized into flat circular piles. These piles are called grana or granum singular. Um, they are surrounded by a watery matrix which fills the chloroplast. It's called a stroma. And chlorophyll, the photosynthetic uh, pigment, is embedded in the grana, so that stack of thylakoid membranes. Um, within the chloroplast, there are also starch grains, uh, lipids, and ribosomes suspended in the matrix uh, to fulfill the needs of the chloroplast, and we will talk more about this in class. So finally, we will be completing a lab in class where we're going to take a closer look at the photosynthetic pigments. We are going to be using chromatography. Um, in order to separate the pigments that are present in spinach leaves. Um, so we'll be using um, a solvent that will grind up chloroplasts of spinach in, and then we're going to be using um, polarity as a means of separating those pigments along this strip of paper, and so we'll be able to see all the different pigments that are present in spinach as we do this test. So this is potentially a possibility for an IA, so be keeping this in mind as you plan for that coming up. Thanks.